So in the analytical NKPI based application, everything will remain same as um, it was in case of your fact sheet application. But one thing we have to do here is as in the fact sheet, only the search result was required by our front end application. So the front end application would be getting those value from your search connector in the back end server. But what we need is some different server which can run on top of SAP HANA itself and trying to give a lot of data, trying to calculate a lot of data in a fraction of time. So what we do is we try to add a additional server which is HANA access engine which is a HANA server in the backend here in the backend server which is directly talking to the HANA database and we have an additional component here which is responsible for talking to our application if the application need any kind of data in terms of O data we return the data to the application and to consume the data from the database we normally use calculation view or analytical or attribute views because they will be much faster and we have already developed those analytical calculation or attribute view to summarize many data feeds together which are required by our analytical application. So this is how from a performance aspect if I try to crunch many tables data together try to join those tables together those views will already been created and created in such a manner that performance is better because I am actually going through many tables and trying to bring some data for our business user to analyze those data. So I need to have those particular views doing this for me and those views are basically performing the operation inside the database so it's taking the full capability of in memory so when the data is all stored in a columnary storage in a RAM then I can actually get through huge chunks of data which is in gigabytes or terabytes in a fraction of a second and give those data back after filtering what actually user need in form of O data from this O data server and back to my application to see those data in terms of graphs or KPI fields. So that's how you would be actually having this additional server which is HANA access engine running and directly talking to HANA database with views. You can also run queries procedures through this access engine and trying to get those data or give those data to your application. So that's how the analytical application works. So now if we try to improve this and uh, what do you mean by improvement? What is the problem in this scenario? Most likely the challenge which you will face in this scenario is that the calculation view are not transportable with your BAP code. That is the biggest challenge. Apart from that, if you want to change the calculation view, analytical or attribute view, then you have to basically do a lot of graphical editor changes. It's not much easy to extend those and reuse. That was the second reason why we thought to change calculation views, which was primarily used in analytical and uh, KPI based applications. Now what we have done here, the changes is added a CDS view. When you create the CDS view, you will be utilizing the annotation and internally there's a lot of MySQL statement which will be run on HANA database and they can bring data very fast. So that is advantage of CDS view. They will be included in a BAP repository. So you can include those changes in the transport request with the other code of your services and UI5 app, which you can transport to systems, multiple systems like quality production and also to other systems. So this was the main reason why CDS views were used. And now when you are having S4 HANA database or when you are running your Fury application in S4 HANA, CDS views are primarily used for analytical based application. You can also use this architecture for transactional, fact sheet, analytical and KPI. So all the different kind of application which we have seen in the previous sections can be run with your SAP when it is having SAP S4 HANA utilizing the Fury application. So that's the new architecture what primarily 
at the time of when we create this course people are predominantly using and we will have a complete detailed course on CDS views coming few weeks but for now from an architectural point of view this is how CDS view are utilized you basically have the same scenario that any OData requests go through the web dispatcher to enterprise search and if you need data then it comes from the CDS view from the database and go back to the application apart from that if you are trying to get data which is of transactional nature then you again go from the web dispatcher to your front-end server to the back-end server where the gateway services are and if there is a write operation directly write data into SAP HANA database or if it's a read operation if you have a CDS view for that then it can also read those data from CDS view so a little brief about CDS view as we all know that views are basically combination or a virtual or design time artifact where it actually doesn't exist in the hardware which is the memory but it is logically created for joining multiple table and getting those data back to the application to use it so similarly in case of our CDS views we use annotations to develop those joins or try to define how the data will be gathered from the database and presented to UI and these are for the read operation of the data when we're trying to access through multiple data try to join and combine few fields of few data from many tables these are utilized so that's how the modern or this current scenario is when you are having Fiori application running on S4 HANA which can do all the three different types of applications which we have seen in the past from a nature wise transactional application which are there for process or business process then fact sheets for search and contextual search the third is analytical and KPI based application and this all can be done here so this was our architecture overview for different types of Fiori applications I hope that you are pretty clear now about how these are actually presented now in the next section we will be going and uh, going into the hands-on mode and trying to set up the scenarios and server for us to work on so it will be much more fun when we try to do things from our own side I will try to give you a clear understanding of one types of application which you have to work with hands-on and then um, we will be going to detail that how you can go we will be going in detail and seeing how you can get those components and see if those components are present in your SAP system or landscape and if they are not then what are the missing pieces and what are this front end and back end components are and from where you can get this so let's catch up in the next section where we start the hands-on for our Fury development course.